you are a licensed social worker providing therapy to a 15 year old client named Taylor. During a session, Taylor combines to you that they are being cyber bullied by a classmate and are experiencing severe emotional distress. As a result, Taylor asks you not to inform their parents about the bullying as they fear their parents will restrict their online activities. What is your ethical obligation in this situation? So A, respect Taylor's request for confidentiality and avoid involving their parents as long as there is no immediate risk of harm. B, immediately inform Taylor's parents about the cyberbullying to ensure their safety and well-being. C, collaborate with Taylor to develop a plan for addressing the cyberbullying while considering their preferences and well-being. And then we have D, contact the school's authority to report the cyberbullying. Oh, wait, I did pull D out, so never mind, it's only three. So with that, let's look at A, respect Taylor's request for confidentiality and avoid involving Parents, as long as there's no immediate risk of harm. Do we keep that or do we throw it to the birds? What are we doing? Throw it, throw it out. Okay. B, immediately inform Taylor's parents about the cyberbullying to ensure their safety and well-being. Do we keep it or throw it out? Keep, keep, keep it. it. Okay. C, collaborate with Taylor to develop a plan for addressing the cyberbullying while considering their preferences and well-being. Do we keep it or do we throw it out? Throw it out. Keep it. No. Oh, oh, I'm here. Okay. Now I'm hearing a mixture here. So we keep in, let make sure I got this correct. We're throwing out A. We're keeping B and C in what? B and C? Is that correct? Y'all quiet. I'm just trying to make sure I got the right process elimination. So we're keeping B and C for now, right? Yeah. Um, Okay, that's what that's the confirmation I needed. So remember what I told you guys, you want to look at who you are in the scenario right now, it just says licensed social worker. You want to pro look at who is your client? Why do I say who's your client? Because there's an age there 15 years old, if ASW has an age there, there's something cognitively, behaviorally that you need to know, right? Now, during a session, Taylor confides you that they are being bullied by a classmate or experiencing severe emotional distress as a result. Okay, so there is your presenting problem. You wanna look for who you are, who's your client presenting problem. Now, Taylor asks you not to inform their parents about the bullying as they fear their parents will restrict their online activity. So then there is the client's perceived problem. So with that, I'm going to go back to B and C. Immediately inform Taylor's parents about the cyberbullying to ensure their safety and well-being. Or C, collaborate with Taylor to develop a plan for addressing the cyberbullying while considering their preferences and well-being. Now, now that I've broken down the question, I'm wondering if your answers have changed. So let's look at B. And I don't see anybody in the chat, so I don't know what's <laughs> what you choose b or c we still have a mixture here or no i choose c and yes. why c because you have to meet the client first to see how he can address it to give him self-determination to help okay. him to, to build because right now that's his weak point but you want to strengthen mm -hmm. him to let him know for a fact let's work with this here and see what what necessary steps that we can do to protect yourself and then if it gets further than that, then I'll introduce the family. But right now, I'm, I will work with him to build his from a strength perspective. And I also will try to help him do self-determination to address the problem. And then whatever gotcha. for is well built. That's the reason why. All righty. And I'm checking the chat as well. What about the other answer that we have hanging in the box? So we have B. Do we keep that or do, are we throwing that out? Someone said B earlier, so I'm wondering if it has a change after I broke it down. Don't get quiet on me now, y'all. Who said B? Somebody, somebody said B. Who said it? Was it you, Michael? I can't remember who said it. I forgot what B was. <laughs> what? Oh, don't try to see. <laughs> Laura said not me. <laughs> somebody said B. Oh, uh, okay. 
with that being said, we're going to go through this again because I feel like once I broke it down, you somebody switched their answer. So you have the client's perceived problem and you have what their presenting problem is twofold. Taylor's presenting problem is being cyberbullied by a classmate. She's experiencing severe emotional distress. 15 years old. The other part of her perceived problem from her end is that she fears that her parents are going to restrict her online activity because of it. So with that being said, we would not choose B. We would do C. Collaborate with Taylor to develop a plan for addressing the cyberbullying while considering their preferences and well-being. So it's the most appropriate answer according to the NSW Code of Ethics, emphasizing the importance of respecting client autonomy and also maintaining confidentiality, ensuring client safety. So in the scenario, guys, Taylor is experiencing cyberbullying and has expressed concerns about involving their parents due to potential restrictions on their online activity. It's crucial to work with her to address the cyberbullying while considering her preferences and safety. So option A, respecting Taylor's request for confidentiality, that's important, but it's also necessary to assess the situation and collaborate to develop a plan that ensures that she is safe. Option B, immediately informs Taylor's parents might not respect her autonomy and could potentially lead to unwanted consequences. Option D, which was not there, um, originally talked about calling authorities, which we can throw out. So by collaborating with Taylor, you are empowering her to take an active role in the situation while ensuring their safety and well-being. The approach respects her autonomy and acknowledges her concerns. You have to remember that ethical decision-making and social work involves balancing confidentiality, respecting your autonomy, but also emphasizing safety while fostering collaboration and informed choices. The other piece is, is that she's 15, right? So what would Erickson say about a 15-year-old in this situation? Y'all going to leave me hanging again for real? Okay. <laughs> No. Go ahead, Mike. Cause one of y'all pop off. No, I feel bad because I. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. You, put, you chose the, me originally, did you? I'm from the old school of limit her time on social media. Oh God! But <laughs> I had to. I had to get away from that because when you said C, I was like, okay, let me think a little different. Um. So yeah, that's that. that I think that's what I was. I was thinking B too. I was thinking big. Mm -hmm. so. I know. Yeah, and you said you're going to leave me hanging. You're talking about something that's quiet. <laughs> and he just, I was like, what's it? I don't know. It's Michael. But yes. So part of this, you guys, when reading ethical questions, any application question, because this is you are applying ethical knowledge from whatever reading or from what you know and applying it to this question. She's 15 years old. So part of this is realizing that. Of course, Erickson would say in terms of her development, she's slowly starting to break away from her family of origin. That's normal. You know, her identity involves outside of the family and connecting and finding her identity outside of her family system. That's the part where I'm saying when you see age, you have to think cognitively, behaviorally, where are these clients? That's where our lovely human behavior theoretical concepts come into play. You have to think about those things when you're looking at a question like this. And that way actually keep you, Michael, from choosing, going, you know, uh, and running to the parents, right? Because part of this is that she is growing up and she has to learn how to navigate these situations. So allowing her that autonomy helps her also develop that independence and also navigating social situations that are tough, right? while still being having the safety of our parents. Does that help in the explanation? Yes, it does help. Okay, old school, Michael. I'm sorry calling, that's your new name. Um, <laughs> all right, so we're going to go to two, okay? We're going to go to two. I'm gonna put the question, this one I have to put in the chat, all right? So I'm going to paraphrase it because I didn't be with Catherine's um, interview. I didn't get a chance to put this one in there. So a social worker, 
assigned to a new client, you're gonna see it in a minute, who has experienced, hold on, a traumatic event and is displaying signs of distress. You guys should start seeing it pop up in the chat. In isolation the client has reached out for support and is seeking assistance in coping with their emotions what should the social worker do first I'm gonna paraphrase Okay, so we got A, conduct a formal assessment of the client's trauma history. B, provide the client with immediate coping strategies and interventions. C, establish rapport and create a safe and supportive environment for the client. And then we have D, collaborative, collaborate, I'm sorry, collaborate with other professionals involved in the client's care. All right. So I will repeat this question again. A social worker is assigned to a new client who has recently experienced a traumatic event and is displaying signs of distress and isolation. The client has reached out for support and is seeking assistance to, in coping with their emotions. What should the social worker do first in this situation. A, conduct a formal assessment of the client's trauma history. Should we keep it or throw it out? Keep it. Throw it out. Throw it out. Keep it. Throw it out. Throw it out. Throw it out. Throw it out. <laughs> I, I knew this was going to be a good question. Um, I'm going to put a question mark next to that one. Remember, guys, we're only eliminating, we're only eliminating two. So B, provide the client with immediate coping strategies and interventions. Throw it, Throw it out. Throw it out. Throw it out. Alrighty. C. Establish a rapport and create a safe and supportive environment for the client. Keep, Keep, it. It. Keep it. Keep it. D. Collaborate with other professionals involved in the client's care. Throw it out. Throw it out. Throw it out. out. Alright, now we're in between two. Conduct a formal assessment or establish rapport and create a safe and supportive environment. So let's talk about A, why would we keep it? We would need to see the effect on them. You know, are they having thought suicide or just you need to see where they are. Mm. All right, thank you. And why would we pick C? I think we'll pick C because you got to build a rapport first. I mean, A, I mean, you talking about the, you can kind of do that next. Well, she was in a traumatic um, event, so we need to make um, her feel safe first and be a rapport. And we also have to be mindful that this is a new client. So um, it's saying that a social worker has been assigned. So we have to remember that this is in the beginning phase of treatment. Um, and so it doesn't state where rapport has been built as of yet. Um, so we just definitely need to think about following the um, social work. Um, what is it called? The helping process? My brain is fried. Sorry. I was about to say, Lauren, I was about to say, it sounded like you had a long day. <laughs> All righty. So. Let's talk this through because uh, there are a lot of good things here. I bet you guys got to the best too. 
Now, this question I thought might be a little tricky for you. Now, the good thing is that you guys pointed out new client, right? So that's important to note because that gives you a clue to where they are in the treatment process. Now, we have traumatic events, so trauma is now evolved, right? And they're seeking support and reaching out for help. What is the first thing you should do? We would not do a formal assessment, not yet. That would be secondary to establishing rapport and creating a safe environment. That is going to be more effective. The social worker's initial priority should be establishing rapport, creating safety and supportive environment for the client. Building rapport is essential in the early stages of a therapeutic relationship. By creating a safe and supportive space, the social worker can help the client feel comfortable sharing their feelings and experiences. This foundational step sets the stage for effective communication, trust, and collaboration throughout the therapeutic process. It allows the social worker to gain insight into the client's emotions, concerns, and needs, which is essential for developing a personalized and effective intervention plan. While assessment, coping strategies, and collaboration, they're all important and we would do them, but we that strong therapeutic alliance, y'all, is what's gonna carry you through, not just a treatment plan or evidence-based strategies. You have to establish that rapport and create safety first. So I'm glad you guys were in between two. There is your explanation. Any questions before we move right along? Nope. Okay. All right. That means I get a good job, I guess. So we're going to go to three. In a crisis intervention, I'm putting it in the chat. Intervention. Situation, which of the following actions is most likely to be effective in ensuring safety of the client and those around them? Okay, so there it is. I'm gonna put in the answers. Offer advice and suggestions to quickly resolve the issue. So that's A. B, allowing the client to manage the crisis on their own. C, actively listen to the client's concerns and emotions while providing empathetic, well, I'll just put empathy. D, immediately involve law enforcement. Okay. Sorry, I typed fast, so there's like a little typo in there. But you guys get where I'm coming from. So let's look at A, offering advice and suggestions to quickly resolve the crisis. Do we keep it or get rid of it? Get rid of it. Get rid of it. Get rid of it. B, allowing the client to manage the crisis independently to foster reliance. Do we keep it or get rid of it? I'm hearing um, get rid a mixture. Throw it out. Throw it out. Get rid of it. Throw it out. Throw it out. Get rid of it. Throw it out. All right, so I'm going to throw it out. Okay, after we listen to the client's concerns and emotions. Keep it. Keep, keep it. it. Keep it. Keep it. Keep it. Keep okay, it. immediately involving. About assessing the severity of the crisis. Throw it out. Throw it out. Throw it out. Got it. So you guys were correct. That was pretty much a, a no brainer, I think. So in a crisis intervention situation, active listening to the client's concerns and emotions while offering empathy is most likely to be effective. This approach allows the social worker to establish rapport, understanding the client's perspective, and validating their feelings. 
So by creating a supportive and non-judgmental environment, the social worker can help the client feel heard and understood, which can be crucial in de-escalating a crisis. Okay. The other ones do not fit. I don't know what that is. Somebody got paper or something. Um, <laughs> all right. So we're going to go to the next question. When working with a client, I'm going to put it in the chat. Who is resistant to engaging in therapy and is hesitant to discuss certain topics? Which approach is least likely to be effective? So A, motivational interviewing. I got a short hand these guys, so I'm gonna read them over. Gentle exploration. C, providing direct advice. D, building rapport. And trust. So I'm going to read these. I had to shorthand them. Hold on. All right. So with that being said, I'm going to read the question over. When working with a client who's experiencing resistance to engage in therapy and is hesitant to discuss certain topics, which therapeutic approach is least likely to be effective in promoting a collaborative therapeutic relationship? A, motivational interviewing techniques to explore the client's ambivalence. B, gentle exploration of the client's concern and reasons for resistance. C, providing direct advice and solutions to address the client's issues. D, building rapport and trust through active listening and empathy. So let's start with A. Do we keep it or throw it out? Throw it out. Throw it out. Throw it out. Throw it out. I think you're going to keep A. Oh, I think A is going to be it's it's least. Uh, it's least. We can, no, no, don't tell, don't say not to. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Oh, no, no, let, no, let no, him no, keep no, it. Leave it. Let him keep it. Let, yeah, let, let it, let it stay. Let it stay. You know, this is a learning process. We got, you know, got to let him, got to let him learn. So, <laughs> so, oh, no, CC, don't do that. Yeah, you want to use motivation to interview Yeah, you want to Oh, no. So now he going to go on the cross. I was like, mm -mm. So, tag, y'all. I was trying to get him to fall. See? And not just more so for like learning purposes. Someone just kind of yells out like an answer that you know is not correct. Leave it. Look, only reason why I say leave it alone because it's a learning experience for everyone in the room. So if you're like, oh, you know that's not the right, just leave it there. You know. Um, so so <laughs> so would be gentle explanation of the client's concern or reason for resistance. Do we keep it or do we throw it throw out? Throw it out. Throw it out. Throw it out. Throw it out. C, providing direct advice and solutions to address the client's issues. Keep, keep, it, keep it, it. Keep it. Keep it. Keep it. Keep it. D, building rapport and trust through active listening and empathy. Throw it out. Throw, Throw it out. out. Throw it out. Okay. So it says least likely. Least and not questions. You got to know what exactly they're testing. You have a client that's resistant, so you would need to know. When you have a client that's resistant, you're going to have to build rapport with them as well. So when a client is experiencing resistance to therapy and hesitation to discuss certain topics, providing direct advice and solutions is least likely to be effective for promoting a collaborative therapeutic relationship. This approach could be perceived as dismissive of their feelings and lead to further resistance and breakdown of trust. A, motivational interview techniques, yes, we would do that. Gentle exploration of clients' concern, yes, we would do that. Building rapport and trust through active listening and empathy, yes, we would do those. So when you're looking at least or not questions, these can be difficult and tricky at times if you're reading them too fast. If you need more time to look at them, flag them after looking at the second time or your exam so you're not spending too much time. And you can always come back to them later. With these, it's really about knowing what exactly are they testing in the question. In this instance, you have to know what are the ways to empower and connect with a client that's resistant. 
Okay, so did you get that, um, Maurice? Hmm? <laughs> All right. Let me stop messing with him. All right, with that, we're going to go into the last one because I'm about three minutes over. So I'm going to make this fast for y'all. I'm going to just kind of shortchange it and then I got to run. Um, so a social worker who is working with a client who has a history of substance abuse and is in recovery. The client has been maintaining sobriety. for months, but expresses isolation and loneliness. The client's primary support system includes family members who are struggling with substance abuse. I mean, substance use. Okay. The social worker recognizes the need to address the client's isolation so we're going to have to look at which intervention is going to be appropriate to address his isolation so i'm going to put them on shorthand in the chat suggesting the the client distance himself from family members to avoid triggers. So that's one. B, encouraging the client to attend local support groups, meetings, and engage in social activities. C, recommend that the client resume contact with friends from their past who were also active users. Okay, last one. D, advise the client to focus solely on individual therapy to address isolation. All right, so let's go through the first one. A social worker is working with a client who has a history of substance abuse and is currently in recovery. The client has been maintaining sobriety for several months, but expresses feelings of isolation and loneliness. The client's primary support system includes Family members who are struggling with substance use. The social worker recognizes the need to address the client's social isolation. So what intervention is most appropriate for us to implement? Is it suggesting that the client distance themselves from the family to avoid potential triggers? Do we keep it or do we throw it out? Throw it out. Throw it, throw it, out. Out. Throw it out. Okay. B. Keep it. Keep it. Keep it. Keep it. Keep it. C. Throw it out. Throw it out. Throw, throw it, it out. Cool. D. Throw, throw it out. Get rid of it. Throw it out. Throw it out. 
Boom. So we're left with B, right? Right. Yes. Yes. B is the correct answer. So encourage the client to attend local support group meetings, engage in social activities. That's the most appropriate intervention. Encourage the client to attend the support groups can help with the isolation significantly because of the risk factors for relapse and because he has a history of social um, substance abuse. Support groups provide a safe and understanding environment where the client can connect with others who have similar experiences. Okay, you guys, you guys kind of help me in hostages because I was supposed to do a hard stop at seven. I have uh, someone waiting for me. So with that, just remember you guys, reach out to me if you're interested in their membership. It is gonna launch. I wanna be able to help more of you at a level that you're able to commit to um, and that's flexible to you. So feel free to send me an email, either journeysalicester at llc at gmail.com or go ahead and find me on social media. I'm on several different channels. You guys can find me there. Send me a message that you want to be a part of the group. I have not announced it on social media just yet, but when I will, um, I I don't want to be overwhelmed because it's probably I'm probably the only one doing this. 